I read, I didn't know what you eat, but I think what that changes are really important. So you gotta make sure you do them all the time, at least once a week. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did, right? Because a solution to a potion dilution. <laughs> roll it, roll. And once again, what my adventure is not with Gabriel. It seems like ages since I've been on camera because the last couple of videos have been cinematic, so it just seems mad. But, anyways, good to be back. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be doing a water change on the Jewel Reel 240. So I'll perform the water change, give it a bit of a clean, not too much talking, but I will let you know what I'm using, the products I'm using, and how I do things and why I do things, that kind of thing. So yeah, I have done one in the past on the Jury 240, but I thought I'd do a bit bit more of an updated version with obviously the new scape and there's a few things I do slightly different, so I'll show you. So I hope you enjoy this one, hope you get something out of it and I'll crack on with that. Let's get beat this water change. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, I just give all the glass inside a clean, make sure everything's scrub down and what I use is these and I'm not just saying this these are really really good James from Horizon Aquatics gave me one of these ages ago and says yeah try these really good and they do the reason being they're good on glass or acrylic they're just thin so you can get in every little nook and cranny dead easy and washable and they last for ages this is half of one they come in this packet so it's like a Vito pad Little square, like you see, cut them in half, I'll even more, whichever you prefer, but honestly, really, really good product. So if you want looking for some sort of decent cleaning pad, whatever, brilliant. So nothing exciting, just get in, clean the glass. Fill that's off, eight hand skimmer, I'll just take it out. I'm not going Clean the impeller, I done the impeller just the other week, so there's no need to do that. But the rest is basically, I take it in my sink. What I'll do this year, hopefully you can see, if you've got one of these at home, you probably know, but these just click off, and there's a tiny little pad in there, sponge pad, click off dead easy. <laughs> yeah. So just be careful when you take it, because sometimes if you've got trim, you'll have some trim in there. So just be careful, I don't go down the sink. So I'm gonna take this to the sink, give it a good clean, put it back, and that's that done. I'll put this back in later on. So you should do this last. I'm not gonna do everything in depth, like I say, that just comes off, clean the sponge, and I'll be putting that back in later on. So the filters are off. Next one I'm gonna do is just give it a bit tidy up, have a look, see if there's anything needs doing. I am having a bit of an issue with thread algae. I think it's thread algae, string algae, within the moss and the bulb like this. With the tooth toothbrush, I try and physically remove as much as possible. Um, another remedy for that, which I'm trying, I've took the light duration is only around five hours now, so I've reduced that. Hopefully, it'll calm down with that algae. Not too worried about it, I'll get rid of it eventually. So, yeah, crack on the lag. Yeah, so like I say, a lot of algae in there, so I just try and physically remove, twist it off. Bit tricky, like more tedious, but I'll get on top of it eventually. See if it's flying off, but we'll obviously get them if we can. Heat algae, can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, just lightly brush the leaves, get as much off as you can physically. So the tanks have had a bit of a clean. I've just like rubbed my hands and stroked the plants, get rid of all that debris that's in amongst it. So it's time to take some water out. We'll get that done now. Okay, so taking the water out, really easy. We've got some hosing. This is 16 mil hosing, which attaches to the inlet of the Wazi filter, which I'm not using because I've got glass, glass way in. Excuse me. <laughs> so I just hook that in. And basically, I've got this hosing running at the minute to my bath, so it just runs in the bath, or 
it is best to obviously use the water and there's lots of nutrients in the water for you like see your house plants your pot plants your plants outside but i've only got a little yard nothing in there at the moment so we'll do that get this water down so yeah so that's the main one the water's going to siphon out and while it's doing that i'll just get a smaller hose in a bucket and i'm just going to take a bit of the debris out as well because i have disturbed a lot of muck and poop and everything floating around the tank so i want to get that out so again i'll just crack on okay so i've emptied the tank roughly 67 percent and i'm just going to give all the moss and the plants a bit of a soak so they don't dry out It's not so important to do this for a brief water change. If you're doing some heavy maintenance, yeah, it's a must. You don't want them dry out, especially with the light on, so that's why I do this. And this is the main purpose of this video, what I wanted to talk about. I've actually had a thermostatic mixing valve fitted. Thermostatic mixing valve? Yeah, that's it. Yep, really handy if you've got multiple tanks. Um, it's set at around 30 degrees, which does seem high because my tank tanks are set at about 23, 24 degrees. But by the time it comes through outside, it mixes with cooler water. After I've took the temperature afterwards, which I'll do the day again, it's usually risen by a degree or so, but it's fine. So it's working a treat. Big shout out to Stephen, who is a fellow aquascaper who gets in Horizon Aquatics, and he's also a plumber. He actually came and did the job for us. So thanks a lot, Steve. It's made life so much easier. So thanks, bud. Cheers. Like I say, it's it's great. Fit one yourself if you're clever like that. I'm hopeless. Or we'll get a plumber in fit that if you're george former fan you've seen this the colander trick it does work a treat though i must have me mine's blue so i'm just going to clip that on there for the hose to go in and i'll go and get my hose so i've got the hose always good to have the stop valve on stop water getting every race you know, switching on and off much easier that's what i prefer to use so basically i'm going to stick this in the tank let it go. So excuse the noise, but the water it isn't treated so good old CKM Prime. Used this stuff for years and years and years, pretty much since I started the hobby. So really good conditioner, highly concentrated, lasts forever. Tons and tons of people use Prime, so be a follow. So I'm just going to add this. It says one cup will be 200 milliliters. But I'm just, I always put a little bit more in just in case it's high chlorine levels in the water and then tap water. Let's see can prime in. I also add sea can pristine. I've not only been using this, but it's a natural organic waste management. And Basically, that being safely limits sludge and detritus, so it breaks it down. So, obviously, you've seen this hosing it out, but there's also that, you know, I've got the big combos in here. So, I've been using this. I started using this on the hard scale only tank, and it's, it's brilliant stuff, really good. Keeps the water nice and clear, and you, you know it's taking care of that leftover waste. So, I'm just going to add this. So, this one sheet has got use. For each 40 litres is from one, one cap for each 40 litres. Then use a maintenance dose of one cap for. I've done a lot of water change, so I'm going to use a bit more. One cap for each 40 litres. So there you go, there's two water conditioning products I use from CKM. I recommend it really good. This isn't essential, this isn't the most good. I found it really good, so I've started using it. So you can prime, that is essential. If the water's not here, if you're not using all the water, you must treat the water. So, temperature wise, like we're saying, great, nice cool water. Going in there. Fish are happy, everyone's hungry, doy.
basically it. Basically, <laughs> that's that's basically it. How I do my water changes and a little bit of maintenance on the Dual Rio 240. Hope you've gotten some little tips from it. Um, one thing I haven't done is feed the plants yet, but that'll be a future video. I will show you the full CKM Flourish fertilizer routine, which I do on the tank, which has great results, which you can see here on a non-CO2 injected tank. I'm over the moon, especially with the moss growth as well, and the ball bites. So yeah, I'll put this down, <laughs> fill in. Yeah, one thing I would do if I was just doing a straightforward water change, I would just have the water coming in and coming out at the same time. So really quick, and at least you get your water change done. But always remember that, yeah, your water conditioner, so you can prime. I would highly recommend getting the thermostatic mixing valve because oh, it just makes life so much easier, especially if you've got more than one tank or multiple tanks. It just makes maintenance a breeze. So, um, yeah, as usual, I hope you've gotten something from this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a big like, really helps out. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. So that's a back for this one. Thanks for watching. See you later.